So this week we're going to talk about domestics or arguments. And when I talk about domestics and arguments, I'm not talking about when two people are physically fighting with each other. I'm talking about when people are screaming and yelling and you arrive on scene and you've been called there to kind of referee the two people who aren't getting along. <laughs> All right, man, take a seat, buckle up. Ordinarily, we'd start with uh, orientation of the car here, but we got calls pending, and we got to get to them. So, we're rolling. We're going to have to learn on the way. All right, today, I... Now, first, we're going to talk about the most common mistake I see people make, both uh, junior officers and veteran officers. You have two people having an argument with each other, screaming back and forth, and what people who don't really understand what they're doing all that well will try to do is they will try to stand next to the two people, stick an arm in between, and then wedge themselves between those two people and end up getting involved in the shouting match or end up getting the living crap beat out of them. This is no good. This is not how we want to deal with arguments. We want to get those two people separated apart and talking with us instead of arguing with each other because that's the only way we're going to resolve the issue. Remember, when we're dealing with a call, if nobody's hurt, what we want to get out of people is voluntary compliance. We want the problem to be done that we've been called there for. If our call is these two people arguing with each other out on the street or in a house or anywhere really, what we want is we want the argument to stop and we want these people to leave each other alone for the night or the day or the rest of their life or whatever the issue is best solved by. So when we show up onto the scene of a domestic or an argument and we're trying to get these two people separated from each other, very often it's a lot easier to stand back over this way and try to get one of these people to come to us. Now this doesn't work as well if you're a single, single officer who's showing up alone on scene, but if we start talking from the side to these two people and try, instead of trying to physically separate them, Oftentimes, these two people will then realign so that they can both try to tell us their side of the story. Now, if they've stopped arguing with each other and now they're yelling at us about whatever their side of the story is, we've accomplished 50% of our task. We've got them to stop screaming at each other. And the, it was very easy to do that. All we had to do was not wedge ourselves between them, but make our presence known for a uniformed officer standing out there. It should be pretty easy for us to yell, hey, what's going on? Hey, come talk to me. They both turn, they both start talking to us, and then when a second officer gets there, they can position themselves off to another side and draw attention from one of the parties involved and get them talking to them. And now we have these two parties separated and we can move them to separate areas of the parking lot or separate areas of the house so that way we can get their sides of the story and they're not arguing with each other and then we can switch officers to figure out what we can do with the issue or when we get a third officer on scene maybe that person can babysit one of these while this person talks to the original one and we can figure out how we can resolve the issue. Now if this seems like a complex way to solve a fairly easy issue it's not really that complex once you start doing it. It's a lot easier to talk with people than it is to fight with people. It's a lot easier to use our brain power to separate people using psychology than it is to separate people by physically separating them, especially when physically separating them generally doesn't work all that well. Now this method does a few things for us. One is it keeps us from having to physically fight with people on the scene, and two, it allows us, if this is a domestic and we've got someone who's the victim of a crime, to talk to that victim and then to get a separate story from the other person who's possibly our offender without them hearing each other's stories and while keeping them from screaming back and forth from them. Now the easiest way to do that, a lot of guys are confused with how to keep them screaming back and forth from each other, how to keep them talking to you. It's very easy. All you have to do is look at them when they're screaming and yelling back and forth at each other like, hey, come look at me. I want to talk to you. I want to help. Come talk, come talk to me. You'd be amazed at how well that works. As soon as they see that you are taking some sort of sympathy on them, they're going to very quickly turn toward you. If they're the offender in a domestic battery or if they just stole something and they're having an argument with the shopkeeper about having just stole it, they're going to think you're on their side and they're going to start spinning you a tail and you're very quickly going to figure out whether that tail makes any sense or not. And if they're the victim, once they see that you want to help them out, they're very often going to turn and talk to you 
and then you can figure out what you need and get all of the evidence that you need in order to make that arrest later on down the road in the call. If nothing else, it gets these two people separated apart and we can try to talk sense into both of them. We can talk to both of them and say, hey, listen, somebody's going to end up going to jail if you guys keep fighting out here. What's going to happen if this person calls us back and says that you battered them? That type of stuff, a lot of times we can then convince somebody to leave the scene. If it's the shopkeeper or the domestic, if one person leaves and it seems like they're going to leave permanently, 90% of the time that solves our problem for the evening at least. So keep these things in mind, whether you're a security guard working at a mall and you have to deal with a customer management dispute or you have to go deal with a retail theft where it's a small store and maybe the manager is arguing with the person that just stole, or if you're a cop and you're dealing with a domestic, separating parties is a lot easier if we use it psychologically to separate the parties rather than physically trying to separate them. If you like this type of content, check out the Patreon page. Every little bit helps. It might get me out of the studio that I built in my garage and into something a little better, or maybe a camera that has some audio so you don't have echo in the background. If you have a suggestion for upcoming videos about issues, especially with speaking to people, with dealing with calls that you want looked at, drop it down in the comments below. You guys be safe and take care of each other. I'd like to thank all the Patreon supporters, and especially the shift supervisor level Patreon supporters that we have listed here. Your contributions are what allows free field training to continue on and become better. Thank you. Well, now if you like that video, go ahead and subscribe, because there's a whole lot more to come. As soon as I... Uh, Finish up these calls. Go 10-8. County 291.